Welcome to our Administering North Star Assessments. I am so excited to have you here with me. This is the third workshop in the North Star series. So in the last couple of sessions, we took a look at the different parts of North Star in order to help you decide how much or what parts of North Star you want to use in your library. From there, we focused on how to set up our learners, how to get them started in the North Star online learning, which is also known as ENSOL. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we looked at using assessments without proctoring turned on in order to help our learners decide which lessons to start with. Today, we're going to focus on administering proctored assessments. Um, hey, Maria, glad to, glad to have you here. Before we get too far into today's workshop, I'm just kind of curious still where you both are with North Star. Um, and again, you can answer in our chat. You can unmute if you want to unmute and just go ahead and, and call it out. Um, are you currently using North Star in your library? And maybe if you even just want to raise your hand. Maria, I, I'm pretty sure you are. Mimi, are you currently using North Star? Oh, great. You have a lot of students using North Star. Are, I'm assuming you're both using the online. Have you used any proctored assessments yet? We've never had one take a proctored exam. Okay. Maria, do you proctor yet? I don't recall. Yes, I do um, when they come in here. I can see that. And Mimi, I see you said that you want to make sure that you know how to proctor in case someone is interested. Sounds good. Um, and so that pretty much answers that last question of what do you expect or hope to learn from this workshop? So what we're going to do next is, oh, Maria, yes, I do proctor in office, not online yet. So I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to proctor, which allows you to set up proctoring so that it would work for you either way. So we'll definitely take a look at that. So what we're going to focus on this, I see you, Maria. This is our um, third workshop in North Star. So we are really focusing on, I'm going to teach you all how to use the proctored assessments in North Star so that your learners will be able to earn certificates for passing assessments. Our specific goals for this session, by the end of today's session, each of you should be able to find and pass the online proctor training in North Star, which Maria, um, I'm sure you've already done because you're proctoring in the library. You'll also be able to decide specifically when you should be using proctored assessments and when to have your learners take their assessments without a proctor. And then you're also going to be able to start proctoring sessions for your learners. So you have to turn on proctoring mode and we'll look at how to do that. So we're going to start with a quick review of some of the information we've learned about assessments from the last couple of North Star sessions. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, there are a couple of ways that learners can get into our North Star assessments. They can go to the website digitalliteracyassessment.org or they can use your library specific URL. Okay, so again, there is the website digitalliteracyassessment.org. That is the North Star website. Or they can get into North Star um, using your library specific URL. If they use the digitalliteracyassessment.org site, when your learners try to take an assessment, they're going to be prompted for your location pin. Uh, so they have to know it, you have to have it posted somewhere, you have to remember what it is. Um, or you can use that location specific URL and it automatically brings your library or your learner into your library's version of North Star. Do you both have your library specific URL somewhere set up on your computers that your folks use North Star in so that they are able to get directly to that? Our users grow directly into North Star website, but they all have to log in and that does link them back. Um, so while Maria is typing, I'm just gonna real quick 
make sure that you know where your library URL is so that you can have your learners get into it. When you log into Northstar as into the admin portal, you're going to see that you have this URL directly in your admin portal. So truly I had just logged in before I didn't go anywhere else. Uh, my location pin for Plainfield is 7NTA. However, we bookmark, actually we don't even bookmark, we have this as a shortcut on the desktop on our public computers. That's gonna bring folks directly into our library version of Northstar, um, which is useful. Let me show it to you now, what it looks like when I go into it. I just have to, this is the um, version where I am not Kristen, the trainer at Plainfield. I'm now Kristen, the student. So here's my library URL. When I log into that, let me pop that open a little bit. It shows my learner or shows me that I'm in Plainfield Public Library. I can get in and proctor assessments or take a proctored assessment. Um, and then I can log in as a learner. So using that URL focuses people directly into your library, which does just make it a little bit easier for them to then get to Northstar as a learner in your library. Um, and I see that Maria said, I had our IT guy set up a link on our computer so they don't have to type it in. So using that URL that's right in your um, admin portal, makes it just a little bit smoother for getting people directly where they need to go. Also, if folks set up themselves as a learner from that site, it automatically links them to your library's URL. Um, I'm sorry, to your library's North Star as well. I'm trying to keep track of chat as well, since both of you are not able to use your microphones right now. Um, some other things to remember from those first couple of sessions, any assessment, can be taken without being a North Star learner, without having a user ID in North Star. But if the learner doesn't have a user ID or doesn't log in, their results won't be tracked within North Star and they cannot earn a North Star certificate for completion. Um, and then the other thing to remember is that assessments, proctored assessments and other assessments as well, can be taken both remotely or at a North Star location. So let's do a quick overview of our proctored and our unproctored assessments. So I'm going to start with unproctored assessments. Unproctored assessments are very useful for pre-testing your learners. It's going to help you gauge what they need to work on. So you, they get into North Star, they go ahead and take the assessment and then they can see their results. You can see their results. They can look at their dashboard and they can see what it is they need to work on in North Star. You also wanna use unproctored assessments as practice testing. Once they've taken their online lessons, they use their unproctored assessment to practice so that they're ready for their proctored assessment. A couple of other important things to remember about unproctored assessments, North Star allows a learner to take two of the same assessment unproctored each 24 hour period. And this is so that it's nudging the learner back into using NSOL, back into using the North Star online learning. Um, sorry, Sarah typed in chat something. She's trying to fix her headphones. Okay. Um, Learners can only take two of the same assessment in each 24 hour period. And this helps to nudge the learner back into using the ENSOL, back into using the North Star online learning. So that if they're not passing the assessment, they're trying to relearn how to do things versus trying to memorize the test so they can pass it. So that's why you can only take that same assessment twice. Also, just remember a passing score, both for proctored and unproctored assessments is 85%. So if a learner passes an unproctored assessment, if they get 85%, they're gonna receive a badge for their passing score. But if they are unproctored, they will not be receiving a certificate. Any questions, anything to add either on unproctored assessments? I know both of you have used them a little bit. 
or a lot. Pretty much covered. All right. Um, and again, jump into chat if you need to. Proctored assessments. Proctored assessments, on the other hand, they're really here to validate a learner's knowledge and their skills. So when a learner passes a proctored assessment, they still receive their badge that we were just talking about with unproctored. They also get a certificate of completion that they have completed and passed the skills for such and such course in North Star. Passing scores again are still 85%. And then the other thing to know about your proctored assessments is that the test taker has a code of conduct that they're expected to follow as well as you as a proctor or have a code of conduct. So I'm just gonna real quick pop up this test taker code of conduct. Conduct. If you are proctoring assessments, you're actually expected to read this out to your test takers during the proctoring session, or you can provide it to them on paper, you can post it up somewhere in your library, but they should be looking at this before taking a proctored assessment. And it's really that same general information that you would expect any test taker in any sort of testing situation to follow. You know, be, be quiet, be respectful. There's other people taking a test. Um, they're expected to listen to and follow instructions. They need to let the proctor know before test taking if there's some sort of accommodations they need. Test takers are not allowed to have notes books or even electronic devices. So they should not have their phone nearby where they can look up some answers for the test. As a proctor, you need to be seeing the student's photo ID at the test so that you verify that they are who they say they are. I'll be honest at Plainfield, we're typically proctoring people that we've been working with throughout a, a, a period of time. So by the time they come to get it proctored, We've already met them. We've seen their ID because we see that at the very beginning of a course. So we typically don't look at, at, at the beginning of a proctoring session. Um, and But we know who they are. I saw Maria nodding. I think you do the same thing. You, you kind of know them at that point. And then all of the acceptable forms of ID are listed on this slide as well. So you just want to make sure that this is posted. You also want to make sure that you've seen this if you have not passed your proctor test yet, because this is information that is helpful to know. Um, are they allowed to use notes for unproctored tests? Technically, they can because there's nothing about the unproctored test that says don't use your notes. I would suggest that they don't, because if they want to earn that certificate, they should practice the test the same way that they're going to take it. So I would suggest that they don't use their notes, but they could if, because you're not watching them, so they could do that. Hopefully that helps answer that question. And then, so that's our test taker code of conduct. I mentioned earlier that our learners receive certificates and badges when they pass their proctored assessment. So over here at the left side is a picture of what a certificate looks like. And then at the right side is what the badge verification looks like. And I don't know if you all have looked at badges within North Star, if you've ever taken a proctored test or an unproctored test and passed it. If you've received your badge, I went through and played with them. Um, so what I did to get this image for you is I, Past the basic computer skills, I accepted the badge. I then posted it on my LinkedIn profile. Anybody who then goes to look at my LinkedIn profile will see all of the North Star assessments that I have badges in. And then if you are, for example, an employer, just sort of checking me out to see what I know, you can click on that and it will verify what the badge is for. So it says, Kristen passed this test with 85% or higher. She didn't have a proctor. Here are some of the things that she doesn't know about. So even the badges on their own are relatively helpful information to have. Um, do either of you have questions just on, go ahead, Maria. I do. Um, so <laughs> when they do the tests and they get 
supposedly get the badge, what happens if they forget to accept the badge? Because um, that has been an issue. There is a go place. Back. There is a place where they can go back and get the badge. And I know I have it in my notes for this session and I'm completely blanking on it at this particular moment. But I promise you, I think you as the instructor have to send it back to them again. So I promise before the end of the session, I will show you how to do that. Okay, thank uh, Because you. it's so easy. You're so excited that you passed it. <laughs> and so you just go, all right, whatever. And you finish up. So it's easy to forget to take their badge. So that's a good question. I will definitely take a look at that with you all after. Um, anything else? Okay. So before we move on, let's just make sure that we're clear on the difference between when to use each test type. So let's say that I wanted somebody to take an assessment so that we could figure out, do they need all of the North Star online learning for um, basic computing or the, all of the NSOL for email? So would they take that, that pretest proctored or unproctored? Unproctored. Beautiful. Let's say that they really didn't know so much about email. So they went through and did all of the online learning for the email lesson. So now they're ready to take a test, um, but they need a little bit of practice before they're ready to really take a test where they can earn a certificate. So if they wanna take the test for practice, proctored or unproctored? Unproctored. You got it. And then when they wanna earn their certificate, Proctored, unproctored? Pro proctored. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oop, and now I'm saying, I know I went a little bit fast. Mimi's got the right answers in the right order in chat. Beautiful. Okay. So Maria is a proctor. Mimi's going to learn how to proctor. So things to know about becoming a proctor. There's a couple steps that are listed on the left side of this slide. In order to become a proctor, whoever is your North Star admin for your library, when they either set you up or they can edit your account, you need to be set up both as staff and as proctor. So you set, you need to be set up in your account as staff and as proctor before you can start proctoring tests. You also need to complete the proctor training and then pass a test on that. So if you're set up in North Star as a proctor, you haven't done the proctor training yet. When you log into North Star, instead of seeing your proctor pin information below your location information, you will see a reminder that you need to take the proctor training. The proctor training is a video that takes about 13 minutes. Although if you read faster than the narrator, you're probably going to be getting it done faster. Um, so you can you watch the proctor training video and then you wind up having to pass a test of information that was in that proctor training video. I will let you know that if you wanted to for any reason, for example, to remember what was on the test so I could make sure that you all are learning everything, you can find the proctor training video again in other resources. Um, and so I've watched it a couple of times just to make sure that I was clear on everything that you all needed to know to pass the proctor test. Um, and one of the things that is important is you as a proctor have a code of conduct to follow as well. So you wanna make sure that you are watching the video, that you're aware of the learner or the test taker code of conduct, as well as the proctor code of conduct, and then you can pass the proctor test. It's 10 whole questions. Unfortunately, you don't, whoops, I forgot I made this all fancy. Unfortunately, you don't get a badge or a certificate for passing proctor training, but. So let's now take a look at how to actually proctor an assessment. And Maria mentioned it earlier that she has proctored in person, but hasn't proctored folks online. Proctoring in person is simply a matter of when the learner is on the North Star page, 
Maria or whoever is proctoring clicks validate computer via PIN and types in her proctor PIN. Um, I'm going to click cancel to get back there. So you can have a whole room full of people. You can have one person. You have them go onto this same North Star URL, your library specific URL. You as the proctor click validate com computer via PIN. You can also have the learner do it and you type in your PIN. And then you're keeping an eye on them. You're fo following the proctor code of conduct while they are taking their test. However, there is also a way to proctor folks where you're logged on to one computer and you can have one or multiple people that you are proctoring and you just have them all join a proctoring session that links back to that computer. So Maria, I do this when I have 10 people I wanna proctor and I don't feel like running around to 10 people and typing in my proctor pin. You can also do this remotely. And if you're doing it remotely, just make sure that in the admin portal, you're gonna read their tips for remote proctoring because you still wanna keep an eye on your, your test takers. You still wanna make sure that they're not utilizing any other extra tools to be able to press, pass a proctored assessment. Um, but so I actually proctor this way all the time because that way I don't have to remember two ways. And then I just find this a little bit easier. So the first thing you would do is you would go to your admin portal. From your admin portal, you would click on assessment. So again, this is you as the proctor. You go to your admin portal, you click on assessments, you click start new proctor session. So you're going to see it right here, my admin portal. I went to my assessments. I went to start new proctor session. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once I've done that, I then will have my learners start logging in and joining my proctor session. I'll show it to you all at once once I explain it. So my learners start joining my proctor session. And then what I would do is I would click on sync. And when I click on sync, then I'm going to start to see my learners show up in my list. So proctor, I'm sorry, admin portal, assessment, start new proctor session, sync will get your learners to pop into your list. As a learner, you go to that library specific URL. I always have them log in. And then after they log in, I have them click on join proctor mode. So my learner goes to my library specific URL, they're going to log in, they're going to join proctor mode. And then as the proctor, I might again need to click on sync, and then I start to see whichever learner shows up that they're joined. Once I have my learners in my proctor session, I can start proctoring them or I can deny them. Okay, so they come into this list. I click start proctoring, I click deny. Whichever one makes the most sense, typically it's going to be start proctoring. After the proctor selects, selects start, start proctoring, the learner is then going to see that their bar above their assessments turned green. This green lets them know that they're being proctored. Proctor mode is on and they can end proctor mode whenever they're done. So with that green line, they then start their assessment with their proctor. So what I want to do now is just walk you through it. Okay, before I walk you through it, any specific questions on this process? Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth between two different Google accounts. Right here, I am an admin. So as an admin, I'm sorry, right here, I am a proctor. As a proctor, I click on assessments. Oh, apparently I just talked too long. Let me log out and I'm gonna log back in here. Again, I'm logged in here as a proctor. I click on assessments. Who remembers what I do after I click on assessments? Or can guess. So from assessments, I want a proctor. 
So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll click on start new proctoring session. And can you guys definitely, you can see my Google screen with North Star open in it. Perfect, start new proctor session. So I am set up in proctor mode right now. Now I'm gonna go into another screen and I am going to bring up, here we go. Now I am a learner. So here is Kristen as the proctor. Here is Kristen as a test taker. So I'm at my Plainfield Public Library, library specific URL. I have an account, so I'm going to log in. I'll just go ahead and click log in again. I am not in Plainfield right now, I'm hiding in my basement. So now I'm here. And if I just start to click on these assessments, I can take the assessment unproctored, but I want to join proctor mode. So I am now waiting for a proctor to respond. So the proctor started proctor, started a proctor session. The test taker came in, logged in, put in a request for a proctor. When I go back to the screen where I am a proctor, I didn't even have to click sync because I talked so long that it came up on the screen. And Kristen, as the learner, I want to start proctoring her assessment. So you're gonna see that I now have started to proctor Kristen. Um, I could have two other learners come in now. I check their IDs. I make sure they've seen the list of test taker rules that they need to follow. They log on to different computers. They request for a proctoring session. They're gonna show up in this list and I can start proctoring them as well. When I go back to Kristen, Kristen's in proctor mode. So she's gonna go ahead and just start taking a, an assessment right now. She's gonna take it proctored. My computer is gonna speed up in just a moment. Beautiful, and then oops, I'm gonna turn off sound just so that that doesn't bother. I have take, taken assessments, I'm gonna skip the orientation and I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of assessments. Perfect. I'm sorry, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions and then let's see, okay. Now, I can see that Kristen Lerner is actually taking an assessment. She started the word assessment a few minutes ago. If something happens, I can stop proctoring her right there. For example, maybe I saw she was, oh, I don't know, looking at her notes or something. So I can go ahead and stop proctoring. I can have other students coming in and taking those assessments. So. I know I jumped back and forth. As a proctor, where do you start? If you're going to proctor a bunch of people, whether it's remotely or even in the same room, who remembers where I start to proctor assessments? You start a new proctor session. Yeah, you go into your admin portal. You click on assessments, you start your new proctor session, you wait for your test takers to come in. As a test taker, you go ahead to the um, library specific URL, you log in, you request a proctor, and then when they're ready, you go ahead and you finish taking your test. Any questions yet? Yeah. Maria, I saw you <laughs> unmuted right away. Go ahead. So my question for you is, okay, when I'm here proctoring in the classroom, I can see what they're doing. When you're doing this online, how do you view, can you see them? Can you see their, if, actually their screens? How does that what, work? What you can do is you can't actually see their screens. You can say, you know what, I can only remote proctor if you maybe you're gonna use Zoom as well. And you watch, have them log into a Zoom 
turn on their camera and then you can keep an eye on them. I mean, as much as you can keep an eye, you have no idea that my notes are sitting right in front of me. They're not, but if my, you know, you do the best you can do. Okay, so there is in the admin portal, I'm gonna open up resources. In the admin portal, under assessments, oh, I apologize, not under assessments, under resources, there is information on proctoring. So you can take a look at what North Star thinks about proctoring, you know, and remote proctoring and how to handle that. Um, and you do the best you can. I mean, it's not a, a perfect solution, but North Star is, has, has an ease of access to it. And we wanna make sure that our learners can take their assessments, even if they are remote. So you're gonna do the best you can. Great questions. Yeah, Mimi was asking the same thing. Anything else, Maria, Mimi, on as a proctor, how do you get in and proctor assessments or as a learner, how you're getting in? Great. Let me just bring us back to PowerPoint. We did our little demo. Couple things to remember about proctoring. Proctored assessments, the same learner can take multiple assessments in the same session. So Kristen Lerner, let me go back over here. If Kristen took the word assessment, oh, I can actually show it to you on the next screen. If Kristen took the word assessment, finished it, she can then start PowerPoint. So if you say we're proctoring for the next hour, however long they have, they can take as many assessments as they can, as long as they're different assessments. Um, the same learner cannot take the same exact assessment in the same proctoring session. So if Kristen takes word and doesn't get, what's the passing score on an assessment? 83 or 85? 85. I always want to say 83 also, it's 85. If Kristen <clears throat> doesn't get 85%, then I will see that she didn't pass it. I can't, she, the system won't even let her take that assessment a second time. She could go into Excel or something else, or the next time I'm ready to proctor folks, Kristen can come back and take word again, but um, she can't take it in the same session. Make sense? So I do have one other question that mm -hmm. kind of, um, so say you're doing a proctored exam, somebody gets sick in the middle of the exam. If they have to leave, do they kind of finish what exam they started or you have to start a fresh exam with them? When you are done proctoring and you end proctor mode, like we could leave it open. <clears throat> they could leave and come back during that same session and finish. However, if you end the proctoring session and Kristen's gonna start again three days later when she's feeling better, she'll restart that assessment again. It doesn't keep track of where she was in that assessment. Um, they're typically relatively short. Um, with my level of computer knowledge, I can finish an assessment in like 12 minutes, probably less. For a lot of our learners, you know, 15, 20. Some take a little bit longer depending on reading skills, computer skills, test taking skills, et cetera. But they're not super long tests. Um, do you find, actually, Maria, you had said you've done it. Do you, do you find that to be true that they're not outrageously long tests for your learners? No, I think um, what I've come across is um, reading comprehension yes. or the other biggest obstacle is most of my students are um, higher in age, so they have difficulty seeing. Mm. So that is another bigger issue. But. Yes between the the headphones and the read yeah it's, reading it. it's nice it's that so, it reads so, so. to you it's <laughs> nice that you yeah you can repeat through those as well okay um so when the assessment okay you can stop proctoring somebody at any time when the assessment is complete you're going to end proctor mode and if any of your test takers pass their assessment as the proctor you print out a certificate 
for them or certificates or you can group it all together. So we're gonna take a look at all of that next. To stop proctoring someone, you click stop proctoring on that specific learner. The learner can continue to take unproctored assessments. They can continue to use, continue to use North Star Online Learning, but as soon as I stop proctoring, it automatically takes you the learner out of proctor mode. So let me find my friend Chris. Let me find me as a proctor. I'm going to stop proctoring Kristen. Are you sure you want to stop? The assessment's still in progress, but it will be unproctored. So I stop proctoring Kristen. If I now go back to Kristen, um, it'll take a moment, but here where it's telling me it's a proctored assessment, it is going to switch this to unproctored in the middle of my assessment. Um, usually it's pretty quick. Right now it's just taken a moment. And then you're gonna see in my proctor list that I do not have any more learners that I'm currently proctoring. That doesn't mean I'm done. Once I have stopped proctoring someone, I still wanna make sure that when I'm done, I exit out of proctor mode. So once I am done proctor mode, I wanna click on end proctor mode, and then that will get me as the proctor out of the proctoring session. Okay, so you always wanna make sure you end proctor mode. The likelihood that you're gonna wind up having to stop proctoring someone is pretty slim, but it's important to know that you can if you need to. So once you end proctor mode, your learners, when they finish their assessments, one of two things is gonna happen. They pass their assessment. And if they pass their assessment, great, you'll print out their certificate. You can, um, go ahead and let them take other assessments. If they didn't pass, you will then want to review the standards with them so that you can, you can help them see what they needed to work on. So if they pass their assessment, you're gonna go ahead into the admin portal. You're gonna go to assessments. You're gonna search for the particular user. And then you're gonna see that you can print the certificate for them or you can click on the plus sign below the certificate and that can group a bunch of assessments onto one certificate. I find most people like one certificate for each assessment they pass, but if not, it'll just list every single assessment on one certificate. So they can see those either way. If they didn't pass their assessment, you definitely want to review with them what they need to work on. So they can print out their assessment results. They can't print out their own certificate, but test takers can print out their assessment results. But if you look at their assessment results from the admin screen, whoop, hang on, sorry. If you look at their assessment results from the admin screen, you will get to see both what standards they need to work on. You can also see specifically what questions they got wrong. And you don't necessarily want to go over, oh, this is the question you got wrong and this is the right answer. But if you want to see what question they got wrong so you can really work them through that skill, you would be able to find that as well. So let's just take a quick look at, I'm in my admin portal. I just want to make sure that I'm going into my, um, assessments, I am then going to search assessments by user, and I'm gonna search for Kristen. I didn't have to shrink the screen. This is our real system. And so I just didn't wanna accidentally show you results from somebody else, but I went into my assessments. I went in to search my assessments by learner. Here are all of the assessments that Kristen has passed, has failed, et cetera. So she didn't do too great on the um, Mac OS. So let's take a look at how Kristen did with Mac OS. And you can see she got 20 out of 26 correct. Um, it took her super long to take that test. You can then come down and see all of the standards and which ones she got correct 
and then which ones Kristen needs to work on. And as you scroll further down, right now it's saying, these are the questions Kristen missed by number. You see where it says toggle all questions? Oop, what? that's not what I meant to do. Here are the ones she got wrong. All you need to do is click on, so Kristen couldn't select an operating system. Number four was click on desktop. There we go. I'm trying to find one with the screenshot. So number 14 was which menu to answer questions about using Mac OS. So some of them, it's just gonna say the question, oh, there we go, or my computer is super slow. So here's where Kristen struggled. You can help walk her through what she didn't get correct. Does that make sense? All right, again, your students can only see what standards they mastered and need to work on, but you can see their questions. All right, um, <clears throat> again, admin portal assessments, we searched for Kristen and then found all of her assessments. I'm gonna go back to her results page. Once I go back into her results page, I'm gonna see if I can answer Maria's question from earlier about, oh, oh that's the results from that test. Hang on. Let me go, let's find Kristen again. Kristen Lerner, let's search for her. Okay, Kristen did pass Windows 10. She got 85%. We haven't printed her certificate and she did not get her badge yet. So I clicked where it said not yet on the badge. I come down to the, oh, why I cannot remember how to give her her badge. I'm gonna have to look that up for us, but we can print her certificate from here. You can also invalidate results even if you finished the assessment but I cannot remember about badges. Where do you think I'm gonna to go to find this out? So I don't know how to do something in North Star. Resources. Yeah. Resources, here's what I do whenever I just have no idea even where to start, I go into the North Star manual, control F for find, and I'm looking for help on badges. So claiming a badge, hold on, let's find it. Claiming a badge, any test taker who pass an assess, test takers who pass an assessment, no, you can help them claim their badge. Filter the assessment to find the test taker. Click in the results row, view results at the top right corner, click on claim badge. <gasps> That's where it is. Okay, so let me see if I, here's Kristen, let's, Okay, so once I find the one that Kristen passed, which is so not this one, click on the row where she didn't get the badge, I was one step off. So you find the, the learner, you look at their assessment results. When you click on view results page, they'll be able to claim their badge in here. Badges are through the program called Badger, which is becoming more and more common to use, um, but they can claim their badge right here. It's then going to award my badge. I already have a Badger account, but if I didn't, when I went into my email for Kristen, who is not the proctor, so if I go to my, oh, Hold on, I have to now go and be the other person. I'm sorry, it gets a little confusing when I jump back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my email here and I will see that I received a badge. Congratulations, you've earned a badge and it walks me through all of this stuff for getting my badge as well. Um, Maria, did that help answer that question? I know it was a little bit all over the place, um, but it, in a way, it was sort of helpful because truly there is no way that any of us can remember every single thing about badge about North Star. So by simply going into the North Star manual, 
this control F and then just typing what you're looking for, for me has been just amazing because that manual is monstrous. Questions on how to print certificates. We looked at finding badges. Do you need me to review printing certificates? It's pretty simple. You click print, it opens the PDF for you. One thing we have learned about printing certificates is whoever has logged on to print the certificate, it shows them as the proctor or the um, instructor for that. So if Maria was the actual proctor, Maybe she also was the person who taught all of the classes for Kristen, but Mimi, Kristen didn't get her certificate. So Mimi logs in and tries to print certificates. It's gonna have Mimi's name as the, um, the person who's signing the certificate. So hold on, let me just show you real quick. So you're gonna see down here that it says that Kristen is the signature on their certificate because I'm also the one who went in and printed it. So that's what I'm talking about there. Um, questions on anything? All right, so do you think you'll be able to complete and pass your proctor training? Is any, well, Maria, you have. It is pretty straightforward. Please remember to read both the proctor and the test taker um, rules that they need to follow so that you know those on the for the test as well. We already reviewed the situations where you um, would use proctored versus unproctored. And then just practice proctoring, like make sure that you go ahead and just try it out. Um, I don't know, Maria, did you practice proctoring with other folks in the library before you did it with your students? Uh, no, I actually practiced on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of us have like, okay, you're going to be my student right now and let me practice proctoring on you. So, and I would be more than happy to be your student as well. So if you wanted to do a remote practice, remote proctoring, although once you know how to do it, it's relatively simple and straightforward. Um, so next steps. You got to become a proctor if you haven't, you want to practice it, and then consider attending the using the North Star curriculum, which is the class that goes over how to use the curriculum in North Star to be able to teach lessons using that those tools sort of in person. Any questions, comments, anybody planning on coming to the North Star curriculum class? You are Maria, great. Yeah, I'm going to try. Bab Ulyss. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, it's as as Mimi said, pretty straightforward. So we are all set. I'm gonna stick around if you have anything you want to ask or talk about. Yeah, I have Otherwise, something after. Okay, no problem. Otherwise, I'm gonna say thanks for joining us and I'll see you again.